Welcome, everyone. We're really excited to be here and share these codes with y'all. Water consciousness, this alternate lens that we have. It's a really beautiful lens. Okay. There we go. All right, there we go. What's going on, everybody? Oh, we got our logo stuck there. Like we said, thank you guys for having us, Spencer. Amazing. This is really exciting when you when you invited us to come and speak and uh, share all about water. And so my name is Chris. My name is Jilly. And we're on behalf of Wake Water Co., which is a global movement uh, that has now reached out in over 15 states and 15 countries worldwide. Uh, we're coming up almost 1,000 active members. And really what it's all about here in the next 30 minutes uh, with some Q&A at the end is to share with you guys how water connects with so many things. Uh, I feel like it's so cool. Spencer had a, an amazing drop, we call him. He said it starts with planting seeds, you know, star seeds, and then you watch them bloom. And now we're in the star bloom, which is really, really cool. Powerful day, of course. Uh, if you guys want to connect with us our, at Wake Water Co., we're redoing some of our things on our platform, uh, as well as wakemovement.love. We'll share that towards the end. And then at Come Out Better. And Water Priestess. If you guys want to connect with us one-on-one. -on -one. So let's jump right in, right? Let's jump right in. Obviously, we're all here uh, for a big reason. We're here to empower people, bring forth awareness, speak our truth, uh, really be a light for the world. And what it really comes down to for us, what we've noticed are the things that we can control. You know, so many things that are out of our control. So the five things that we really like to focus on and be a solutionary, what we call it, and instead of always figuring out what's wrong, it's how can we make it right? So how can we improve our health as a collective? How can we help the environment, the earth, the soil, the water? You know, how do we help eliminate the plastics and these chemicals and these toxins and these pesticides? Things that are literally taking over our, our bodies and have been doing so for so long. And another other big one is saving our abundance, redirecting our abundance. Uh, we're going to be talking about how water plays a role in that more than may, many of us may think, as well as saving our time and energy as we put forth the right energy to help build this, this now earth, so to speak. And then overall, enhancing wellness, vitality, and spirituality. And I know everyone on here can agree that's what we're all about. Uh, so how do we do that? Well, one of the biggest things we discovered was the power of water. Now, up until this point, a lot of us may think water is for drinking and taking a bath and maybe giving it to our plants on a hot day. There's so much more to it. And Jilly has shown me over the years, and she's been studying water for so long, and you guys will hear her lens in a moment. Um, what's really powerful is that water works in so many ways, more ways than we can even imagine. You know, just the fact of you even breathing, you're expelling water through your breath. You know, we go to the bathroom, we sweat, we move, we do all these things. And in our everyday life, it also comes down to energy. Water is a type of energy. It's the type of hydration. We know that. It's a universal solvent. So it can break down things and can be that vehicle to hold things. It's a binder. So it can actually literally <laughs> hold on and bind with other things as well. It's an astringent, which is a pulling mechanism, a cleaner, a toner, a disinfectant, a sanitizer, and an emulsifier. Now, when you look in the world today and what our products, the marketplace, the things that are shared with the world, it always comes, it seems, as like a little side effect hidden or like a little ingredients list that we don't know what it is or, or the marketing or the manipulation. So for us, it's about empowering people, uh, educating people, connecting the dots, leaving water drops on realizing and showing people that there's more to it than just what we drink. And it is more than just the liquid substance. When you're looking at water, we're starting with the liquid form and it goes into many forms, which relates to consciousness. So water is known as consciousness because water is the conductor, right? It receives information. It puts out information. It's known as a quantum computer. So as well as looking at water in the physical form, which we're sharing with you right now, we're also going to be going into all the different forms of water. So we invite you to really open up your consciousness here and look at water in many different ways, not just for drinking, right? So you're starting with cleaning, toning, disinfectant. Now we're getting into more of the other aspects of water that most people don't even look like, look at. 
Now, when we zoom out, a lot of times people skip the history of water. And when it comes, there's so many different ways water's been taken from its natural source. It's been bottled, manufactured, mass produced, stolen, uh, literally manipulated, changed and altered. And it really, we got away from ancient water. And this is fascinating because this, this uh, star bloom is, is global. There's people all over the world, I'm sure, checking this out, tuning in, watching the replays and, and sharing their truths. And whether you live in the United States, South America, you know, Europe, um, India, Australia, Germany, Russia, wherever. Ancient water has been here longer than we can even imagine. And what is amazing is that these waters that come from the ground, living water, the fountain of youth, the holy grail, Zamzam -zam water, we hear it, we just think it's in movies or in books or in tales. Mm -hmm. Well, it actually is in this world today. And you can actually have access to it, not alone in these places, also in your home. And this is what we share with people, being able to tap into this everlasting uh, resource that provides so much powerful benefits, therapeutic benefits with certain properties as well. And it, it helps too, when you're looking at water and you're looking at what was done to water. So what was done to the water was done to our consciousness. So that's why we go back to ancient water. That's why we go back to the original water and how there's this miracle water known in the world that still exists. It's just very rare. And so when we're going back to that original water, the ancient water, we're also looking at what happened to the water. What happened to the water happened to our consciousness, dams, damming up our consciousness. Same with colonization, same with domestication of our consciousness. Water flows, it always finds a way. It's expansive. So when we're looking at water and we're looking at the source of water, we're also uncovering the source of ourselves. So we're not just liquid water. We are the miracle water. We are the living water. It's inside of us. We just didn't know what it could do. What does miracle water do, right? What, what is the difference between stagnant dead water and living water? And remembering that we are living water again. That's why we say so much, wake up to water, wake up to yourself. Perfect segue right into <laughs> it. So obviously now, okay, we've zoomed out. We've seen what's going on, things that we want to solve we can create as we continue to build this future for us. And like Jilly said, when we wake up to water, guys, you wake up to so many other things. For this specific share that we're going to be sharing with you here, physical, mental, emotional, financial, and spiritual. Now, up until this moment, perhaps you've only thought water was a physical Perhaps maybe some of you have heard of Masuda Ramoto and the emotions and our body listens. But what about financial, right? What about mental? And then, and then emotional and really tying it all together as you see here on the screen. So the first thing we wanna share with you guys and how water is so impactful with our physical is we forget how we operate. We are electromagnetic beings. We're energy, right? We have so much energy in us. We just try to think we're so dense. The positive and negative, you're going to hear us share that a little bit, right? The masculine and feminine, that light, that energy. And the other thing too is our bodies are batteries. Our bodies are batteries. We're conductors of energy. Like Jilly mentioned, we put out a signal. We receive information. We're powerful. You know, some technologies had advanced to express how we can communicate telepathically. And yet the foods we eat, the liquids we drink, our lifestyle, our habits, our choices, the distractions, the thing that the really matrix throws at us, it's to lower our batteries and it's to lower our voltage, which you guys can see on the right. And it, a good way to see this is that the water in your body and on a physical level is responsible for communication. Mm. So that means all of Chris's cells, right? His brain and his nervous system, his cardiovascular system, everything is flowing cohesively through the water as a medium. So water as a medium, what happens when we're dehydrated, right? As Chris, Chris was mentioning, looking at the acidity and the alkalinity, what happens when we're dehydrated from ourselves? Our body starts compartmentalizing. And then illnesses start arising. So that's that's really the physical. Yeah, absolutely. And if you see on the right too, Jilly always says it's living water. How do you know if living water is something that has a negative charge? It's rich in antioxidants, rich in electrons, which have conductors with minerals. And pH, which is a very interesting topic, uh, just to keep it basic, it is a measurement of voltage in a way. Mm -hmm. So it's fascinating how we've been so duped by the chemical aspect of it when now we're waking up to the voltage aspect of it. And that's the biggest difference with living water and stagnant water is that living water has a negative voltage. It has antioxidants in it. 
So again, what happened to the water happened to our consciousness. What happened over time is that the water lost the negative charge and it started oxidizing. Mm. So the water that a lot of people are drinking are actually oxidizing them. Such a beautiful awakening. <laughs> then we connect the drops even further. You look at the pH scale and you look at the chakras, right? The low voltage, acidic, maybe not, in, not in more in fear, not feeling secure, an acidic diet, acidic beverages, even fear and stress, acidic thoughts. And then if we raise our voltage, right? And go into more alkaline phases where our body finds that homeostasis right in the middle, that same color on that pH of the heart chakra in the heart, that's when our life can truly take off and manifest. So when you start connecting the pH, the voltage, the chakras, the whole body in itself, the physical does become the metaphysical, becomes the spiritual and so much more. So this is a fascinating image just to break down what we're expressing here. Yeah, and this is really cool too. We, we think our brain, right, is, is like a walnut. We think it's like just has fat and, and so forth. Our brain is water, guys. Your brain on water is such a powerful tool. It literally runs off hydroelectricity, chemical reactions, you know, the essence of life, trees growing, plants thriving, animals living. It's literally 70% of our planet. And so much of the things in our world has become to make our brain toxic, the alcohol, the stimulants, the heavy metals, right? The, all these things that are spraying on our produce and in our products, our cleaning products and so forth. It delivers electromagnetic energy, like Jilly mentioned, cellular communication, our DNA, right? There's no junk DNA. It's all amazing, as Spencer would say. We pass that on to our future generations. It makes things more efficient, transports nutrients and hormones, and we forget how much of our brain is on is water. So the next time you're in a brain fog, right? You've got a headache. Perhaps instead of reaching for those other things, ask yourself, okay, where can I get living water? Where can I get water that is electric, that can actually turn on my engine, get my brain going and allow me to create and manifest? And there's so much more to it. What if your brain washed and you're looking to give yourself <laughs> so many water clarity, words, so many right? water words. Exactly. So now we're getting into the more um, diverse forms of water, the water body. So we talked about the physical water, which most people know about, and now awakening to living water, it's alive. Let's talk about the water in the body and how our words, our vibration, the sound waves, another form of water actually affect our water bodies. So within our bodies, we all have water within. Whether you like to say 75%, I like to say 99.9%. .9%. That is my own lens on it. I feel that we are all water. What the water is doing in your body is recording. It's remembering. It's storing information. As Chris mentioned, your DNA is made out of water molecules. The hydrogen bonds hold together your DNA. That's why it spirals. That's why water spirals in nature. So you're starting to see what I call the water lens. It's like, oh my goodness, everything, whoa. Everything's really connected to water. So we're feeling right? We're feeling in our body, the emotions of the oceans, the, the oceans within us. Where are we feeling stagnant? Again, going back to dead stagnant water. Where are our emotions feeling stagnant? What stories are we holding on to if water holds memory? What are we absorbing? What are we able to absorb? What are we retaining? What are we expressing? What are we processing, right? Because we are the quantum computer. We're beyond quantum. We, we are so beyond if you try to quantify water, you're just going <laughs> to, it's endless, it's eternal. And what's beautiful about this is that Masuri Emoto, which I went to his school in Tokyo, and um, after he passed, his son puts on the school, and I got to see on a microscope, how do my words affect the water and the molecular structure started changing. So the words that we speak to ourselves and to other people, our waters actually remember those words and they structure. So feel about that for a moment in your body. What words are you saying to your own waters? Are you bypassing your waters in your body, right? So you can look more into Masuri Emoto's work. And it's really cool too, is I know we have, you guys have such an amazing lineup today. As you go through things, you hear things that whether they trigger you, empower you, inspire you, just think of what you're seeing on the screen. It's your water in your body, the crystals reshaping. You know, people go through detoxes and cleanses and purges and meditations or whatever they're doing. It's like their water literally in their body, the structure of their body, right, mm -hmm. is slowly changing. And that might bring forth an emotion. 
And the more we suppress it and keep it pushed down, it's like just recycling old stagnant water over and over and over. So many of us love filtered and clean water, living water. Yet many of us are waking up to the dangers of tap water and bottled water and so forth. And that's what the same response is happening in our emotional body as well. It's fascinating. When she explained to me the water body and how it's tied to emotions and your energy in motion, yeah. um, it's really, really powerful. Yeah, and, it, and you look at it like this. If the medium within your body is living, right? You are what you eat. You are what you drink. Hmm. So if the medium, the water in your body is living water, imagine what would happen with that perfect crystalline structure, which living water has a perfect structure. Um, obviously, depending on how we speak to ourselves too. It's not just drink this water and you're, you're you know, um, it's also the embodiment of it. So being able to allow your body to listen, to listen to the words that you're saying and allow your body to absorb because once that structure is structured, here's the thing about living water. Once you have a structure, water can be stored in that structure. Information can be stored in that structure. So structure equals store of information. Structure equals cohesiveness. More structure in your body, more crystalline structure, means more cohesiveness. So as we get hydrated, that's why sometimes we can feel more energy. We feel like everything's working together. I've learned so much from living water and looking at the way we built our community, really being like, wow, we're built off of living water. I'm learning how to build economies from living water, from studying water, from observing water is life, mini Wachoni. Love it. And that takes us to the next part. And so we've just talked about the physical. We touched on the spiritual, right? How it connects there. It's all really connected to the spiritual and then the emotional and the mental. Now we're going to conclude this with the financial because in the world today, so many things are inside out, upside down with what's going on. And all a lot of us are looking at financial waters, right? Money, cash flow, currency at a superficial level. When I uncovered this, that there is a connection with our waters in our body and currency, okay? The currents of the sea, freezing your assets, cash flow, liquidity, income streams. When I really tapped into that concept, I was asking myself the same thing. What is dead stagnant water in form of financial waters? What does that look like? Saving money keeping it in the bank, hoarding it, feeling like you don't have enough, being thirsty for money, for currency outside of yourself. And yet you are the currency. You are the actual currency. Just like Chris was saying, we are batteries. We are computers. We, we are alive. We are alive. So somehow within the system, through various laws, through various structures in the government, we have been disassociated from the very abundance that we are. And so when you're looking at entrepreneurship when you're looking at employee consciousness what happened we were we were forced our waters our abundance our currencies was forced to be this stagnant pool and 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 thrown chemicals go to go to school get a good job the the domestication of our consciousness what we did to the water we did to ourselves so these laws and these structures are all commercial that's how most of these courts in the world function is called maritime admiralty law. So these courts are functioning under this commercial law. And basically to make it simple, we've been commoditized. Our waters have been commoditized. And so when you're looking at entrepreneurship, you're looking at multiple streams of income, you're looking at affiliate marketing, network marketing, leverage income, home-based business, assets, investments. You're also looking at where you are streaming your energy. You're looking at the other form of water, which is more of a energetic form of water. And now you're seeing the connection with, wow, where am I dehydrated? Where are my water stagnant emotionally? And then look at that reflection in our abundance, which in our communities, how much do we talk about money? And for so long, I didn't understand the monetary system until I saw it through the water lens. And that's what changed everything for me. I really saw how I was dehydrated. I really saw how they were profiting off of my own currencies. So now we're really getting into the law and we're gonna 
give you guys the basics. Um, we go deeper into this on some of the webinars that we do. Um, I also have a Merchant Mermaid intensive and expansive that I do. So to understand this in a simple way, they've been able to commoditize our waters and own our waters through what's called the birth certificate system. So when a ship, which is feminine, comes into the harbor, hands over the cargo, signs a certificate of manifest, it's the same thing as when a woman gives birth, her waters break, hands over the cargo, the doctor signs a certificate of manifest, and that birth certificate gets a social security number, and that social security number was on the stock exchange. So now we're getting into the deeper aspects of human trafficking and looking at how the systemic part of slavery, the debt slave system, and how we are actually collateral for the debt of the United States of America Corporation. So for me, it started with water. Like we started this, right? <laughs> Who, how many of you actually thought we would go here, right, by the end? So water, some people say follow the water, or some people say follow the money, and I say follow the water. Because that's what started happening as I started honoring my vessel, as I started really taking care of my waters and allowing my waters to cleanse and, and return to that origin, it stopped becoming so much about people's opinions, right? You can throw scientific facts left and right. It came about my body and I came back to my body and I started listening to my body and I started seeing what I call reversals. So these words like citizenship, relationship, worship, hardship, sponsorship, scholarship, championship, those are all maritime admiralty law words. So now we're getting into the curiosity and we're here to spark that curiosity. This is, this is a short session that we have with you all. And we're here to invite you to go deeper into your own waters and go deeper into what that truly means for you. Amazing. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. It's so powerful, guys. Uh, so reach out to us if, for, if you're looking for living water systems, uh, entrepreneurship. And we're really excited to announce, too, going into 2022, uh, we have a 90-day shower coming up. We're it's, making it rain. We're not going to be in the bathroom for 90 days. We're going to be literally showering the world with what you just saw here in the last 25 minutes or so. The physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, and financial aspects you know, a little bit deeper looking what water can do. And it's a great springboard for the rest of this star bloom for you guys, uh, because of all these amazing speakers that are going to be sharing, you now can have that little water lens with it too, and see sometimes something from a different angle. So for any interest in what we're doing, send us an email, that would be the easiest thing to reach to Jilly and I at wakewaterco at gmail. Uh, we had our logo right there. It's not the one to pop up, but it's right here. We got our logo right there. That's Wakewater Co. And uh, we're excited to connect with you guys. So I know uh, we wanted to leave five, five minutes or so for Q&A. So we'll segue and uh, we'll shift from there. And it was a pleasure. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> questions this is always the best part yeah curiosity let's see any drops that you want to share about water did you know your brain is 90 percent water and you have a current that flows to your brain <laughs> we're electric Let's see, so I'm not sure where the, I know we're doing a YouTube live stream. Spencer, yes. where the, what questions we got? If there are any, if not, we must have done a good job. <laughs> this was amazing. This was amazing. Yeah, thank you guys so much and Spencer for having us. And um, it's been an honor just to share. And uh, let's see, comments. comments. Okay. okay, perfect. Question will come through WhatsApp. Okay, we've got the WhatsApp chat pulled up right here. Perfect. Okay. All right. So the future of our movement and everything that we're building. So it started with the water and also um, it started with really stepping into entrepreneurship for myself. And as I started sharing water, I started obviously seeing all the beautiful awakenings that our body had. I mean, it really brought me back to my body. Um, and then it really went into entrepreneurship. And after a while, I just really saw how many reversals were in entrepreneurship. 
And so the last five, six years, I've been focusing on building community and seeing that business isn't about selling people and manipulating. It's actually about bonding with people and building a network and leveraging that and having a little economy start birthing. And so from that space, I started seeing the North Star, which I call the goals, the visions. And um, we were preparing to buy land and build a retreat center so that we can have our community event safely um, and also in a sovereign way and being able to not just own the land, uh, but become guardians of the land. And through commerce, it looks a little bit different than being a regular citizen buying land. Um, so I, that's what my Merchant Mermaid is that I go into further with all of the uh, commerce and building trust and privatizing what we're building. And so, um, yeah, our vision is all over the world. Definitely. Did somebody have a mm -hmm. question? Let's see. How many people ask how much water we have in our body? Yeah, great question. So here's one thing. It's uh, the water in our body. They say 70%, 75%, Jilly 99.9. .9. And that's looking at the molecular aspect, mm -hmm. right? At the molecular, molecular level. One thing to note, guys, if you're watching this, the water in your body, majority of the water in your body is actually in your cells. Yeah. The rest of it is floating outside. And today, most of us are consuming beverages that actually aren't getting to your cells. They're not going home. They're going right past home and they're going out into the toilet or we're breathing it out or peeing it out. So it's really important to realize also when you're drinking water, it's not what you also drink and how much, it's how much you actually absorb yeah. and how much that gets into those, you know, the cells it's of your system. It's called an aquaporin. It's called Aqua an aquaporin. Aquaporin. Yeah, hey. absolutely. <laughs> Which your aquaporin has to, only, can only receive something that has a negative charge yeah. because it's a positive, right? Very fascinating. Blessing water. Yes. Of course. So this is a question I get a lot is um, I started with working with water, blessing water, learning how to truly make holy water. And what it really came down to is people ask me, you know, what are the exact words that I could say to water? What are the exact things? And what I invite people to do is speak to your waters in your body. And as you're speaking to the waters in your body, also listen, slow down enough to listen and then if you're ever around the ocean, the lakes, the rivers, anything, anything with water, or even a pool, even a fountain, you can really honor the water just by recognizing it because water is the missing link. And it reminds me of um, just, just wanting to be seen. It's like water has never really been seen before. So it's, it's really that simple as recognizing, hey, I see you, you're a consciousness. I'm connected to you. I'm connected to the water cycle. I'm a part of the clouds. I'm a part of the rain. I'm a part of this earth, right? Many would show me. So good. Last two really quick. Water tech be done in every household. You just need a power outlet and a, and a hose with a running water supply and you're good to go. Yeah. So yes, absolutely. And where do we get our water from? Well, we have a medical device in our kitchen that creates electrolyzed reduced water, yeah. similar to like Lord's France, you know, all over the world that we've been able to share with the world, what, almost 5,000 people? Yeah. Would you say? Yeah. 5,000 people now in over 15 countries and states. Uh, worldwide. It's a worldwide wake, guys. Thank you guys so much. Yes. Uh, we appreciate yes. it. We'll pass the mic back over uh, to, to Spence and the rest of you guys. Flow. have an amazing day. Stay happy, hydrated, and humble. And uh, we look forward to potentially, you know, connecting with many of you soon. Yes. Send us an email. Connect with us. We'd love to hear from you. <laughs> Be living water, y'all. Thank you. Thank Mwah. you, guys. Blessings. Mm -hmm.